My lords, ladies and gentlemen, very warm welcome back to Transport Fever 2 in the Passenger Only series. So this is Thurrock, and you can probably tell quite easily straight off the bat that I've done some remodelling of the station at Thurrock. I've used the King's Cross mod that is available and I've replaced the station buildings and the station canopies with the King's Cross elements that are available in that mod pack. I think it looks rather nice and it does make the station look rather special. Thurrock has become something of a capital city on this map so far. It's uh, the largest city and this station is also quite uh, the busiest by some margin, shall we say. So I thought it was only fair and befitting of Thurrock's unofficial status that it has a station uh, that reflects its importance, shall we say. Now there are a few issues with the station itself in terms of passenger overflow. We are overloading one of the platforms so that's something we're going to have to bear in mind. I'm not too concerned about it right now, it is a concern of course, but I don't want to focus on it just yet, it's something I'm going to turn my attention to perhaps a little later on in this episode, if not it will be done in the next episode, but for now it's something that we're just going to have to live with. It's not dramatically affecting us. It's better to have too many passengers than too few I suppose. Every train that comes into this particular platform does leave fully loaded so we know that at the next station or perhaps the station after they are going to make us quite a bit of money. Speaking of which let's bring up the UI. As we can see we're up to almost 90 million and with a cash flow of 25 million per year and if we look at the line statistics we can see that our lines are doing us very well indeed. The north-south main line is bringing in 10 million per annum. These trains have had a third carriage added to their consist, and we can see that in action right here as the camping gauge just leaves for Thurrock. I've also added a second Carlisle Hull commuter train onto that service, and the Thurrock East West local service now has four carriages instead of three. All that, of course, is an attempt just to get some of the passengers moving that little bit more speedily. Here we can see the problems, if we look at the terminal list, it is platform 4 that is causing us problems, we have 446 people out of a capacity of 408. Part of the problem is because it is a shared platform, so that's something we could look into, maybe expanding the amount of platforms we have at Fulluck, and perhaps relocating one of these services onto the new platform. But as I said, I'm not overly concerned with it right now, insofar as it's not going to dominate today's episode. If we have some time at the end, then we will come back to it. We did just unlock a new locomotive, you may have seen that during the introduction just there, and I think that's worth checking out, because I clocked that it had decent speed. So let's perhaps think about deploying this on our main line. So using the Isaiah Ramos and Camping Gagey as our test beds, let's go to Edit Selected Vehicles, and let's see, I think it was an electric train if I remember correctly, yes a series 1042, let's see how viable it would be. Now the top speed isn't going to change, unfortunately our top speed is dictated by our carriages at this moment in time, so there's nothing we can do about that right now. However, as we can see, the power is far in excess of what the Flying Scotsman can deliver. This one, as we can see right here, will achieve its top speed in just over 600 meters, which is absolutely fantastic. So it would be very quick off the mark. And with a full load, obviously these numbers will increase in terms of how, how long it takes to reach these top speeds. But I think chucking the Series 1042 onto our mainline trains is the way ahead. It does future-proof the train in terms of as soon as we're able to unlock higher speed carriages then we have a buffer right here we can go up to 87 miles per hour with these trains uh, for comparison flying scotsman does top out at 75 we could of course use the the mallards instead and why don't we let's put in a third train because then we can also compare what the mallard would be like now as we can see it's not quite as quick off the mark in terms of its acceleration it doesn't match up to the series 10, is it 1042? Yeah, 1042. But it is better than the Flying Scotsman. So at the minute then, it's basically down to what we'd prefer to see running the lines. 
Now, we did start in 1950, so we're not going to have as long in the era of steam as we ordinarily would. So, for nostalgia's sake, if you will, do we want to maybe put in the, the A4 Mallards rather than the Flying Scotsman? and perhaps use the series 1042 a little bit later on when we're well and truly past the era of steam. If we compare the Mallard to the Flying Scotsman as we can see it saves 8 seconds in terms of getting up to top speed on a flat gradient and on a medium and high gradient the, uh, the savings are yeah, a bit more pronounced. So that could be worthwhile and then we can turn back to the 1042 a little bit later on. I think that's what we'll do then. The Mallard is obviously a very very prestigious steam train. Uh, I do believe it still holds the world record for top speed for a steam driven locomotive. So I think it's something we want to do. That way we still have a very very iconic train on the main line. It's a train that I think is familiar to most people. So switching to that rather than just a standard run of the uh, run of the mill if you will electric train just for the prestige that these trains bring with them and given the fact we can't utilize the top speed and well this one has a, top, a decent top speed of 90 mile an hour anyway and we still have that excellent rating so if we wanted to we could increase the amount of carriages without suffering too much of a detrimental impact to our train performance i think this is something that's worthwhile doing so let's do it the maintenance is set to very high, so that's good to see. So since we've done that, we may as well have a quick look at one of these trains. And if we just hop on board and then move off to the side, this is a Kylie book, so we can see by the nameplate. So that's always very, very pleasing when the trains have a dedicated nameplate on them, and it does draw the name for the nameplate from any custom name that you put in yourself. So that's that's always nice. It's a nice little touch there. And there goes one of our other mainline trains. I didn't catch the name of that one, unfortunately. So yes, that's our first change for today. It wasn't really necessary, I don't think, but I wanted to do it, and having the mallards on the map is always a nice thing to have. Anyway, moving on then, my general plan for today's episode is to continue working on our mainline. As we know, so far we call it Hull, Thurrock, and now up to Carlisle. I think we'll extend it up to Lowestoft in this episode. If we get chance at the end, we may cross the river and head up to Poole. I think that will be our next mainline stop, and then Dunstable and Wigan. But certainly we want to get as far as Lowestoft. Now, Lowestoft's in a bit of an awkward position, as we can see, because it's sandwiched in between the river on the northern side and this line of hills here on the southern side. So we, in terms of having the train station on the outskirts, we've only got the east and western sides of the town that we could work with. Now, we could do quite extensive demolition work and have our station centrally located that's something we we did a lot of in the previous series the the uh, the American Southwest series on that custom map so that's a consideration let's just go down and have a look here and if we set everything as we would have it for such a station so four tracks blue trim because it's mainline 240 meters long canopy and high speed and all the rest of it where do we think is going to be ideal? We don't want to put it up in the hills. The reason for that is we'd have to climb up the hill to get into the station. And we do have that mod enabled that limits our track gradient or the maximum track gradient we can have. So I think that's off the cards. If we had it on the river's edge, for example, let's just rotate it somewhere like here. We're then limited in terms of our potential expansion for the station because we'd be heading into the river. Now we could do some dredging with the terraforming tools and dry off a piece of the river and dredge it out and give ourselves a uh, an artificial bit of land to work on, but I'm not sure I'm comfortable doing that. 
I suppose what we, if we had it here, the issue we've got here is we have a main road connection immediately after the station platform. So we're boxed in in terms of how much we can expand our platforms in terms of their length. But putting it here would be the most logical in terms of the, the direction that the station is facing because we want to be heading this way over the river and obviously up into Pool and having a line come down this way into Carlisle. The other issue with having the station just here is the height. Now I think looking at the far side of the station it would be elevated so I think we would be, we would be able to have a bridge over the river of course and potentially over that road connection right there as well this is also a major connection this connects into Carlisle and if we have it here it's quite a ways out of the town which doesn't make a lot of sense for a passenger station they do tend to be located quite centrally we could, as we discussed, well, very briefly, put it somewhere like here. It would require quite extensive demolition work to take place in lower stuff to create the space for this. But I, I'm leaning towards this being the better option in terms of all the options that we have available. So I think we're going to have to do that. We have 80 million, so we do have plenty of money to spend on the demolition. So what we'll do, we'll pause it, because as we we know, the AI does have a, a tendency to rebuild the roads as you're trying to work around them. So let's demolish ourselves a fairly large area. We also want to be mindful of the fact that we want to connect both sides of the, uh, the town together again, and we'd probably want to use a bridge, a road bridge, over our station to achieve that. So yeah, these have been disconnected as we know. That's It's only temporary. And I guess this is classed as lower stuffed and this isn't, which is why they're complaining about the disconnection. But we'll sort all that as soon as we're finished our work, what we need to do. So let's put our station there. What we'll do immediately is run the tracks out either side from the station. That way they're not going to... Oh, we're not going to box ourselves in, or they're not going to box us in with their city expansion and rebuild efforts that are going to take place as soon as we unpause it. So let's run out. Let's bring everything together. And I think what we'll do is, like we did at, I believe it was Leeds, we'll have a bit more of a, I don't know, what's the word I'm looking for? We won't just have the straightforward diamonds at this station. We'll go for something a little bit more convoluted and inefficient in effect, but it just looks a bit more interesting during the cab rides. So let's bring that over, in fact, let's push that right down there, get some really high speed, plus lots of real estate to work with in terms of setting all the other connection, uh, the cross connections up. Bring this one in, maybe like that. Again, nice speeds there. Uh, pardon the, <laughs> the floating plebs, they'll disappear as soon as we unpause it. And let's now act as if we're the train coming into the station and make sure we can access all the platforms. So platforms one, two and three are accessible because we can go one, two and then three. Platform four isn't. So we need a way to get from the left hand side over to platform four. That's relatively straightforward. You can just put in a crossover here. 50 miles an hour. Perfect. So we can get to one, two, three and four on our inbound trains. If we were leaving the station, so platform 4 is fine, because it's already on the left hand side. So platforms 1, 2 and 3 
need a way to jump over to this side. I suppose the best way to do that would be to just pop in another cross like that and then everything is accessible. Just to check that so you can go across you can go across, you can go across, and you're already on the correct side anyway. So it does mean our station approach is quite elongated. The station approach, in a sense, starts at this switch here, uh, this switch here, but that's fine. Now we'll do something quite similar over on this side, and we'll run out our initial tracks from our primary platforms, which are one and two, like this. Maybe this time, just rather than mirroring what we've done on the on the eastern side, we'll mix it up a little bit by doing a straight cross point there, and merge that in like that. So, platform one can leave. Platform two could leave if we made this a double slip switch. Platform three can leave. Platform four can leave. In terms of gaining access to our platforms, Platform 4 is open, 3 is open, 2 is open, Platform 1 is not. Now Platform 1 is open. We still need a way for Platform 2 to be able to depart, heading what will eventually be northbound, but the minute it's heading west. And I think we'll just use a double slip switch there. It's quite a slow, it will slow our trains down, of course, being a double slip switch, but it is what it is. So there we go, that's, uh, that's good enough for me, I think. What we'll also do is help them out here by giving them a few bridges over our station. And I think just perhaps even two increments might be enough because our tracks are somewhat sunken. Would that give us a bridge? I bet it would if we arch it. Yes, it will. But it's a bit lopsided. Maybe come from there. Hmm. A different bridge style might work. Let's have a look here. Let's just try a few different options and see if anything will work for us. Almost, but not quite. So let's increase the increment step by another one so a total of three now and that works better the road is nice and level on the bridge I mean and I'm not sure if I like the bridge style we can just try a few of us though so all these are added in by a mod of course hmm do we like that one maybe something a bit darker that one yeah I quite like that one that's a little bit close. It does clip slightly there. Not sure if I'd be uh, overly happy with that. So let's just take it back a little bit further and redraw the bridge. Um, which one did we use? I believe it was that one. Yeah, I think that. Yeah, that's better. A lot more clearance. So that will form our bridge. We're not actually straight there. Let's just straighten it up. Mm. I want it to kind of be at a right angle to the train station and I think there is pretty good. Still got nice clear and oh that's unfortunate isn't it. Um, now let's just redo that, it won't take long. We're there or thereabouts and I would like to get it perfect if I'm honest. So again let's try and get this, make sure we're about there run it straight go back to the bridge style we were using which is that one check our no no that's not quite right that's colliding with that catenary mast right there I suppose what we could do we have no catenary masts in this area so we could just bring our bridge over here a bit ah, that's a bit of a problem just take it back I'm just trying to make sure there's an equal amount of road on either side of what will eventually be the bridge. So let's arch it ever so slightly. Go back to the bridge style we were using. Let, oh, now that's floating. Okay. 
I do apologize for this. I'm sure it's quite frustrating for you to have to sit and lift through. Maybe we'll just go for that style bridge because that's not giving us any issues at all. But let's just move it a little bit further over here. Like that. Yeah, I think that will have to do. Just to save time and messing around and don't want to spend all episode faffing about with a bridge. What about this side? Let's have a look at that. That looks pretty nice to me. And again, rather than faffing about with the different bridge styles, we will just use the default one. So now let's return our road step down to the normal setting. Can we get up there easy enough? Yeah, we can. Um, yeah, we'll just do it there. Hmm, construction not possible from there. Maybe, if we could, nope. Nope, doesn't like it there. Let's just delete that little node. And let's just delete these buildings here. And we'll have a node that comes off there and then heads to the bridge. So we'll sort the terrain out at a later point, but that's now reconnected and that's also alleviated the issue up here about the missing connection. Let's not use a bridge here. Let's use earthworks. Where are earthworks? Am I, oh, there they are. That's what we're looking for. There and there. And how's that? Yeah, that's still A-OK. -okay. Let's provide... In fact, first of all, let's flatten the area off here in front of the station so everything is level with the station frontage perfect yeah that's what ooh. well we could smooth that off afterwards and let's give them a direct connection to a bus station here like we have over at Thurrock so 30 meters yep that's good there let's get it nice and central I think that is that's pretty central for my money. So we'll use that. Configure extra access point on the opposite side. And let's bring this into connection with the streets in the city. So let's have you swing up here, although it's given a weird step on the road. How's that? Hmm, it's not great. Let's see. How's that? Yeah, it's not it's not too bad. And it's not messed this road up as much as it was with the uh, the previous or the initial attempt. Can you just connect into there like that? You can. So we'll remove a few buildings, but we've removed that many buildings now. I think it's not really an important factor for us anymore. And let's also connect across just like that and just rebuild some of the roads that we got rid of just to help them out a little bit and kickstart their recovery. Let's use straight roads here because that's just making a mess of everything there. Um, maybe one across there as well. Yep. And now what we'll do is we'll, we'll restart it. They can start building back as they wish at this point. And we'll just take a few minutes here just to smooth some. In fact, I'll do that. I'll do all this off camera. I'll tidy this up off camera. Yeah. Right. So now what we can do is we can connect this to Carlisle. So let's make a start on that. Let's just check our heights at either side. So we need to do the approach to Carlisle as well. In terms of our height here, we are at 106 meters over here. I think we're going to be quite considerably less than that. Yes, we are. So we're going to have a quite a climb ahead of us here. And we probably want to force a more aggressive incline here just to make sure we can get up to 106 meters in good order. We should be able to, I think. I don't see us having too much of a problem. Let's see, we're up to 43 meters here. Let's just have earthworks for all of this because having a huge viaduct just isn't going to sit nicely with me. So curve them out there. 
What we'll do now, before we go any further, is we'll do our station approach at Carlisle to make sure everything's tickety-boo at this end. Keep you level for now. After we've configured the approach, we will look to start decreasing our elevation on these tracks here. So let's bring the outer platform all the way across like that. And again, it's going to be a long station approach, but that's not too much of an issue. Let's bring that one in like that. Let's make you a double slip switch. And let's just have a... Nope, not quite ready yet. We need that there. Mm, a bit slow, 40, but it's fine. Now let's have a think about this and make sure we've got full accessibility. So we go to platform 4, we can go to platform 3, we can go to platform 2, and we can go to platform 1. Wonderful. And then as we depart, you're already on the correct side. You can use a double slip switch to come over. You would come this way, use a double slip switch and get over, and you connect straight over. So yep, we've got all our platforms open and accessible, so that's wonderful. And now we can just connect these two together. So as I said, we need this track to start decreasing in height somewhat rapidly. I think we're up to about, was it about 40 meters over there? It's prompting a big viaduct, which I'm, again, I don't know if I like that. I think I'd prefer the earthworks and then between episodes, I'll just blend it all together so the earthworks don't stick out quite as severely as they do at the moment. So let's bring those tracks down there. I think we need to push this back somewhat. We left ourselves a bit tight there. So let's just demolish that little stretch there. Bring this over. Will it connect in? It certainly will. It's going for a viaduct. I don't mind a bit of a viaduct. Ooh. Tell you what, let's see how that would work for me. That's. I don't mind that. We would want a higher speed bridge, of course. This is our main line, so we want it to be the fastest bridge we can possibly have. 112 miles per hour, 140 miles per hour here. What are, the, what are those? These are all 140. It looks like 140 is the highest speed we have right now. I don't know if we get any higher speeds a little bit later on. Let's see here. Hmm. Not sure if I like that. Let's just have a look at some of these others. You're floating. I mean, I could put the bridge feet in manually. Do I like that? I'm not entirely convinced that I do. What does the default iron bridge look like? What about, would a suspension bridge look a bit too odd? Let's just have a look. Yeah. I tell you what then. I'd rather use one of these because of the... In fact, no, no, no. What we'll do. We'll stick with the iron bridge for now. When we unlock the concrete bridge... Well, I think it's concrete. It might be steel. Uh, but when we unlock the next default bridge, we'll swap it over and then maybe spend a bit of time making a more finer selection. But there we go, that's all connected. As I said, these earthworks here will be blended in at some point off camera. You don't have to sit and suffer all of that. It does take a while to do it nicely. So what we want to do now is our signals. Much like before, we shall just use not asset, what's it called? Catenary. Nope, gird, gantry, that's the word. We'll just use these gantries here. Ooh, there we go. We'll use these gantries here. And we'll just have the separate ones. So we'll put one there. Can't get, oh, there we go. And there. And then a right stand there. And there. Ah, that doesn't quite marry up, does it? No, it does not. Let's see if it'll marry up a little bit further back. Oh no. Ah, it's because these tracks don't sit parallel, do they? 
Well, what we'll have to do for these ones then is get rid of these, what we've done here, if we can find the hitbox. I, yep, I had it just there. And I saw it a moment ago, it flashed. Very brief, come from this side. Oh, there it is. And where's your, there we go. So for this, these two platforms then, we'll just have the gantry as close as possible to the platform and that should minimize any air gap now there is a slight one there oh maybe there's yeah there is there's a very slight one but with that uh, catenary post in the way you can't see it anyway so that will work for there let's just quickly go over to lower stuffed and do their gantries now i think we might have to do the same over here as what we've just done in Carlisle so let's do our right hand ones first that's what we've got selected and again we'll have them as close to the station or to the platform edge as we can there and there wonderful wait for the auto save to clear off there we go and now we can put these signals on the gantries themselves so signals mm, two aspect well, let's have a four aspect let's let's go book wild here so four aspect there and there ah, that's a problem isn't it we can't put one on this the, mm, okay so let's see what we can do about that let's find the hitboxes there that was quite quick that time getting used to where they are it's pretty much where the signals sit uh, and then ones are f yep they're perfect so we're gonna have to have this a little bit further back maybe there right stand how's that oh that's wonderful not a problem there so let's get our signals on the gantries there head over to Carlisle and do the same hopefully we don't have the same issue here although I think we're going to oh no we've just got it just about couldn't have got it any closer if we tried right there we go so there's our aspect signals our four aspect signals for the departure from the station now we can do our standard trackside signals throughout so these will all be one way so let's have let's have that one just there we could probably put a couple of signals between here and here but we'll think about that later now we'll head over to Lowestoft get their approach signal set up there and now we can just fill in some blocking signals and for these we'll choose some two aspect signals and again on the main line we'll keep our blocks fairly largely spaced so like that uh, maybe one just after the bridge one somewhere on this raised embankment here there and there that will do and one more say here there we go okay so that works out nicely so what we can do now then is go to our north south main line after oh it's we're gonna have to do this all kinds of weirdly aren't we because where would it see it would have to go in what we'd have to do is have lower stuffed oh no now it's going in after Carlisle which is well, well let's go lower stuffed Carlisle Thuddock Hull Thuddock Carlisle so there and then what we can do is are uh, you oh yes you've already got onto your correct platform allocation in terms of north and south somebody has a problem it might be because we had a train at the station when we were making these changes it's certainly not an issue here as we can see that's all good so it is a train issue rather than the line itself so let's close that off the Prince of Wales I guess you are in a station yeah you are so let's hopefully a stop go will sort you out yeah wonderful right so we've been about half an hour 35 minutes or so so the last thing we'll do in today's episode, uh, we're not going to have time to bridge over the river up to Poole, unfortunately. 
because we need to make sure we have bus systems working in Lower Stuff. Now we have our our station. Lower Stuff down X? No. Uh, we'll go back to interchange for this one. Yeah, we have our station station. Yeah, our train station station. But we need some in and around the city itself, don't we? So let's have a think how we want to do this. Right, we're going to have to do, I think what we'll do is we'll have, you can come out this way, along that road there, maybe kick up to the top, so loop up there. Mm. So we want you to be coming back along this road, so what we'll do then is we'll have you then come over to here, down here, and then we'll put one there just to make sure you're coming back in this way so you can get out that way round. So this is going to look a bit odd, this line, but it should work okay. Let's change it to a, a nicer colour than that. Let's go for the dark teal colour. So you're coming this way, it doesn't matter which station we start at, as long as we do get them in order. And then you were coming into here, then out here, yeah that's it. Then up there, and make sure we include that one, and then Grove Road. Yep, that works okay. We are serving two, I mean we could have, hmm, that's an idea actually. That is an idea. Yeah, why don't we have one for this side and one for this side? That makes a bit more sense. Let's uh, delete all of that. And let's see what we can work with. So, you'd come out here. Ideally, you'd come up this way around. Call there, call there, and then go back there. So, yeah, let's do that then. Once again, we'll go for the same colour we just used. No, it's not quite the same colour, but not a problem. So, you can do that. That's very short and sweet and simple. And then we want another new line. And we want you to come in this way. So let's use that. That's the same colour. That's the one. Let's have you come in there, out here. That stop. That stop. That stop. That stop. Yeah. And we'll just demolish this one because it's not being utilised. So, lower stuffed bus loop 01. In fact, which one are you? You're the, yeah, you're that one. And with that orientation. So let's go for, not 01W, that doesn't work. Lower stuffed bus loop south. And then, uh, no prizes for guessing what this is gonna be. Lower stop bus loop north. Yeah, there we go. So let's get the bus depot or the road depot. It's not just buses, of course. Took it in maybe this side. It might eat into the hillside. Yeah, whatever. And let's get our buses. So passenger, we're going to use a space bus. I think three for the southern side. So colour those, it was that colour, yep. So you're on the south, yep. And then some more vehicles, we'll have a couple more on this one. Maybe five, no I'll go six. And you are, oh faster passenger wagons, so we'll look at those after we've done this. And you're on the north run. There we go. Okay, so before we end then, very quickly, let's go look at these passenger wagons. And we'll use the Isaiah Ramos and the Camping Gagey. In fact, let's go for a third, the Kylie Brooks as well, as our test beds for this. So drop off the current wagons that we have. And it's these Einheitswagen 2, or Einheitswagen 2, I guess it would be, because they are German. These are pink. One, two, three. So, slight increase in capacity. And I guess these are actually somewhat heavier. Yeah, 30 tonnes versus 24 tonnes. So, the, the excess weight is accounting for this drop in rating. 
So you, the, you get up to your top speed, obviously a little bit slower, but you get into a higher top speed. Let's also see what happens if we do this. So one, two, three, once again. And now we'll look at that series 1042. How's that? So 45, so it's a lot better. And it would give us the scope to do something like that have some quite I mean even that's still superior so maybe this is what we'll do how much is it in terms of its running costs so per year you are just over a mil and the a4 is yes yeah, so it is more expensive but it does mean we can increase our train lengths quite considerably because we're still at excellent rating so I think this is what we'll go for. So the Mallards unfortunately were quite brief, but it is what it is. We want our main line to be, yeah, we want it to be as best as we possibly can really. I mean, there's nothing stopping us putting the, the Mallard on another service. Perhaps we'll look at that in the next episode. Yeah, let's do that then. So first of all, let's select the Prince of Wales as well drop off the mallard so their appearance was very short-lived but like i said there's nothing to say we can't use them somewhere else drop on the 1042s go to our passenger wagon so you want another two you want five and you want five 50 million good grief well there we go maintenance is now very high I think it's probably worthwhile increasing the capacities. Mm, maybe not. 65 there. Mm, 70 odd in total over there. A whole 50. So we might have overdone it actually on the capacities, but it's not it's not too much of a problem. We'll have to see if they start losing too much money, then that's when we'll have to, you know, make a decision as to whether we want to revert back to something a bit simpler maybe even bring the mallards out of the shed again but well, here's the new trains i mean they are nice they are going to be nice and rapid look at eight seven miles an hour already uh that's not a good sign let's have a look oh yeah that's really not a good sign however it's being offset by the, our commuter services uh, ironically enough you'd think the main line would be the money spinner but i suppose we have just spent a lot of money on them and their uh, running costs are considerably higher than they were a few months ago right so yeah we'll end it there today then ladies and gentlemen mm, do we have a train on approach to lower stuff yes we do the prince of wales so we'll allow the prince of wales to arrive in lower stuff and then we'll take a journey do, do, do wanna, mm, it might be quite quick i'll not set a hard limit we might aim for hull if it takes too long then we'll probably stop at thuluk We'll certainly go past Carlisle because that would be a very, very short cab ride. So, at least to Thuruk, potentially to Hull, depending on uh, video length. So, let's just increase the speed. We've paused the date so we don't have to worry about flying through the era while we're doing this, while we're waiting for the train to get to lower stuff. We're almost there now, anyway. Uh, 50 people, not bad. How much do you going to make for a half load? No, he didn't actually tell us. Oh, there it is. How much is it for a half load? 281,000. Hmm, yes, we might have to rethink this then. I'll tell you what I'll do is, because I tend to leave it running between episodes just to build up some money for the next episode, especially when this series is quite young as this one is, I'll make a decision. I'll see how these perform. Uh, so don't be surprised if you come back uh, in the next episode and the, the 1042s have gone and the mallards are back, uh, but we shall see. Right, so let's uh, restart it now. I had it paused. We're down to... Is that, oh, no, that's, that's better. So back to normal speed. So I hope you've enjoyed the, uh, the episode and you're finding the series overall enjoyable. I certainly am, as I said previously. As always, very special thank you to my Patreon supporters. Your generosity and your support is deeply humbling, so thank you very much indeed. But for now, ladies and gentlemen, all that remains for me to say is, as always, take very good care of yourselves. It's Tata for now.